Yeah. Yeah, man, y'all know what it is, man. Y'all in tune, man. It's the weekly recap. Ed Memphis Sports segment. Sport Business Sports. And this is the Memphis Tigers Sports segment, to be specific. You know, got a lot of things to talk about from the game from Saturday. <coughs> Our boys came out, they really impressed. Got to give them that. My Penny coach, I got to take my hat off the Penny, man. I want to say that first thing. Hey, man, we been hard on Penny. But that man coached his tail off Saturday, man. I can tell he listening and he made the adjustment that he need to make in order to get that team where they need to be at for the future. So it's good to see that. I'm gonna get into quite a few of them today. We're gonna touch base on a lot of them. Uh, we're gonna talk about, you know, uh, the surprises of the game. You know, I really, uh, not the, you know, I know he was a freshman, but uh, it was disappointing. We didn't get to see the best performance from Tyler. You know, he pretty much kind of, kind of, kind of choked it a little bit. But uh, you know, the good thing about it is he just a freshman, so that was the worst we could see from him. So he can only come up from here and he'll learn from it. This is quite a learning experience. This is a humbling experience right here. This let him know, keep your head down and keep shooting, keep gunning. Don't play no games. Play defense. Keep taking them charges like you been starting to do this year. Keep evolving as a passer. Um, and, and just keep doing the things that you need to do in order to get to where you need to be at as a player. You already saw your star talent, you know, your star talent. That ain't to be questioned. Now we just gotta get you to be consistent, especially in big moments like they versus the number three team in the nation. So uh, that was that was that was definitely interesting, man. It's gonna be really interesting from here to see uh, uh, how they handle you know things coming up. I know they got a uh, I don't know TSU next, but I know TSU won the next two games. They got a few light games coming up, man. They ain't got no really important games again uh, for the next few games. So it's going to be good for them to have a game like a TSU, somebody they can bounce back and get that confidence on, you know, and jump all over and dump and slam and shoot threes all over from half court and all. It's going to be good for them to get that get that, uh, get that repetition, man, get that confidence back, man, and see them, see them looking good on the stat sheet too, you know. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. We're going to jump right into it, though, man. From that game from Saturday, we ain't gonna waste no time at all. So you know that was that was uh that was definitely a surprise right there when we uh I expect I didn't expect us to be in that game like that. Um, so for us to compete with them and really get them get them a fight, you know, I was impressed, man. Like I said, um, you know, some of the notes that I I, I just you know took from that game. Uh, specifically, we're going to go to starters from, uh, you know, from the balls, man. That boy Pun, that boy Pun, man, he came to get money. You know what I'm saying? I saw that from the first plays of the game. The first thing he did was Pun, uh, Pun would, uh, he was about to pull up for a three, and I got my notes. You know, I write my notes and let you know I'm, I'm dead serious about being organized and sticking to my points on things. You know, I don't want to come to y'all and just present y'all with any type of mess. So I definitely got my notes in place. Uh, so, you know, one of the things, like I was saying, is um, I noticed about Pun, man, he was about to pull up for three. And one of our Tigers was close. So he gave up on the three because he saw that one of our guys, I forgot who it was, I think it was Thornton that was getting ready to close out on him. So he was closing out on the three, forcing him off the line. So instead of him even taking the three, he just passed the ball. Pun gave the ball to his teammate knowing he was going to get the ball right back to him. So he gets to go straight to the basket, get open. Once he got open, they gave Pun the ball and it was easy money. 
You know what I'm saying? That let me know he that was some Carmelo type, you know, uh ish right there, man. Just the way he, you know, that's what he showed me in that moment. I ain't saying he Carmelo or nothing, but um he just kind of uh he definitely came to get money, man. You know, those type of plays there. You see players do that, and that was not a part of the play, you know. So I knew then I said, Yeah, he coming to get buckets regardless. He's not sitting around waiting on him. So uh that's one thing I liked about that kid. Another thing I want to talk about was uh, Kareem Brew. And I like Kareem Brew. Kareem Brew kind of reminds us of uh, Tony Allen a little bit from the Grizzlies. Uh, you know, Kareem Brew's an energy guy. Uh, he's actually got a solid amount of skill for a college point guard. Uh, he's got pretty solid size, too. Uh, solid defender. He's a solid all-around kind of energy uh, scrappy uh, playmaking guy. Um, so, you know, he's not going to wow you in anything in particular, but his energy is contagious. You know, he can come in right out of the game and be a spark plug and make plays and get buckets that, that cause the team to really get some hope. So that's the good thing about him. But, uh, you know, one thing I noticed, man, he he can he can be a little too extra at times. You know, he be doing too much, and that's what I put in my notes. You know, he be doing too much, man. You know, I watched him. <clears throat> I watched him a few times, man. He'll collapse way too far on the head, you know, trying to help. And it, what was crazy about it, a, a few of the times that he was trying to help, the, the defender, his teammate, didn't even need any help. He didn't even need him. He really had him because he really had him. I remember one particular play where. Uh, Brew collapsed on the on the on the weak side of the fence and, and tried to help. I on the th on the three point. No, nah, it was uh he was Bruton's man was on the three point line, and uh instead of Bruton staying from the mid point out, Bruton collapsed all the way in almost to about a trap, basically a trap. You know what I'm saying? And left his man open. And his man was able to hit the three. It's like, man, why would you do that? Yo, man, his man wasn't even really, he didn't even need help with his man. His man was pretty well defended for the most part. So, you know, he gave, he plays a little too, actually he does a little too much when it's not really needed. And that'll cause some turnovers or some bad sequences for us on defense where we'll give up buckets where we really didn't have to give up. You know, because if he had to just play his man to, you know, just play his man solid as, on the, out on the wing, then the guy that was that was uh, in the post wasn't really no threat anyway. We had him pretty much defended all the way, you know, to the team. So I, I feel like with Bruton, he does a little too much at times, and it costs us. It's a gamble, kind of like Tony Allen used to do. Tony would gamble on steals and gamble on collapses, and you know it would cause us to get beat. You know, sometimes they'll pop us from three. You know that so. Yeah, that's the give and the take that you get with guys like that. You kind of always want to put it in there, put a bug in that ear to, to make sure they try to stay uh, with their arms lent or they shooter, especially if you know a guy is a shooter or if you even think he can be one. You know, you got to stay with their arms lent to him for the most part and try to play your man, you know, and, and cheat as much as you can, you know, when you know the moment is there. So uh, that's something Bruce is going to have to grow on. But for the most part, man, when you're dealing with guys like that, high-energy guys, that balls to the wall, you're going to catch, you know, they're going to go a little too far to times. And that's, you know, essentially what that is. So um, if, if he, you know, learn to do that, man, he'll pretty much be all right. If he learn to do some of that and, and really just improve his consistency because that's the only thing too that he's got he showed flashes of being able to do a little bit of everything i've seen him make difficult shots dead eye in, in, the, in the defender's face with long range i've seen him do that and i've seen him make beautiful crossovers and take them to the rack for an easy layup you know i've seen him do that too so for him he's got a little bit of everything is all about him kind of just getting a little more consistent feel but he's a senior at this point so he's pretty much gonna be what he's gonna be but he can, he's definitely a contributor for us. So not harping on him, but just definitely something we want to work on as far as uh, not being doing too much, man. Play your man, man. Don't get too caught. Don't get caught uh, cheating too deep. And do your man the one gutters down three. You giving up three for trying to say trying to save two. So uh, yeah. So we're gonna move on, man. Another thing I in that game that I really.
you know, realized was my fun for Thornton, man. Ray Norton is, man, he impressed me, man. You know, they call him the Draymond Green on the team. Um, I, you know, I can see that in a sense. I don't know if I would go that far in reality, but, you know, definitely in a sense, essentially on the team, he's the hard-nosed defender, the energy defender as far as being able to defend in the post and being able to step out and be a pretty decent defender on the ground. I've seen quite a few times where – and another thing I like about him, he's tough and he boxes out on the rebounds, man. He boxes out. He really boxes out on the glass. And I've seen him a few times where Williams from Tennessee, from the Vols, Williams is a beast. I mean, that kid, that man, ridiculous, man. I mean, he's just built like a grown man. And the fact that his skill and stuff, man, in the post, and, and man, he gets his three ball really consistent. And really improve his three. I mean, improve his handle a little more. Williams just his little ability to take it from the rack, from the perimeter to the fit to the to the rim. Man, Williams from Tennessee is a ball. I mean, his numbers is already there. He just got to work on his wing skills a little much because when he gets to pros, because he ain't gonna have size. But I mean, Draymond kind of changed that too. So. Opportunities there, you know, if this game translate on the pro level, which I can see that, well, that's a pretty good player. He's very athletic. Him and uh, um, Admiral Schofield, boy, oh, man. How can we not talk about Admiral? The way Admiral did us at the end, that was crazy. Admiral went and took the, took the uh, front of his jersey and ran around and ran a circle, ran a lap around our arena, man, after they beat us. Like it let us know this Tennessee Balls territory. We we run this hill too, even down here. So man, one thing I got to say about that. They don't they they, they know yeah, yeah, he he ha ha this year. Yeah, it's fun, but it ain't gonna be fun when the rabbit get the gun. And you best believe. Hey man, when that 2019 class come in, James Wiseman. DJ Jeffries, Malcolm Dandridge, possibly Trent Wofford. Then they offer Damian Bo too, you know. Uh, I really want to, you know, I, I, there's not a whole lot of, of true star point guards coming out in the next few years. Point guard class will be a little might potentially be a little down for the next few years. I've been talking about that on Twitter. But anyway, just sticking to the script, man. Uh, yeah, I, I really look at, you know, how, how Tennessee played us this weekend. They really showed a lot of trash, man. They talk, they talk a lot of trash, and they really went balls to the wall as far as letting it be known that, you know, it's on. It's on something. Now we see I ain't no love, it ain't none of it, bro. Yeah, the fuck ran laps around our arena holding their logo of their jersey, the, the Tennessee of their jersey, or letting us know this day territory too, that they playing their flag. Playing their flag on our territory. So, but it was all good because what they don't realize, bro, this Penny first year, Rick Barnes been in Tennessee. So he's had a chance to establish his program. So that's the first thing. So, you know, that's a totally different thing. Rick Barnes, kudos to Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes is a damn good coach just to keep it a buck with you, just to keep it a hundred. Rick Barnes is a darn good coach. Man, don't play no games. You got to give boy credit because <clears throat> he ain't got no top three, top five class. Them boys rank top three right now in the nation because that man put together a system out there in Tennessee. He got a lot of skill, veteran, solid, uh, 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 you know, Greedy guys, man, that come and they don't make mistakes, man. They make you pay for your for your mistakes. And that's what they did against a young Memphis team, man. They made us pay five mistakes. You know, Keyon Davenport was man, that man looked like uh, he would look like Josh Howard from from <laughs> from back in the day with the Dallas Mavericks or Sean Mate Sean Marion or something this weekend. And he was just ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? So he really showed me some, you know, they, he might be the best uh, 
I play all the team shit. You know, I, I still say Tyler is, to be honest, it's Tyler is just explosive. I play those games. We had a bad uh, night this, this, you know, past game versus Tennessee, which was terrible. And I wish we would have just got him a lot more, uh, a little more easier buckets going to the rim when the shot was going. I think we should have really focused on trying to get him a few more buckets at, at, at the rim that would have really got his confidence going where he could have got that shot won. So I, I, but you know, it's all really happens. He's a freshman. And he'll shoot it. So shooter's job, the main thing you do is just keep shooting. Don't let him get him down. Like, man, that game was over with the moment the buzzer went off. We did. So that that's 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 all they done with, man. All you can do is go grow from now. Ain't nothing to trip him. So that's the way I see it. So, you know, we're gonna keep the book on it. So anyway, yeah. I think uh in the century, man, back to the point of wrap around on Ray Noah Thornton, man. I really like Ray Noah. The man of bruise and he proved to us, man, this weekend that he come to play ball. That man boxed out Williams them you know, a few times and just kept them totally away from what they was doing whenever they were whenever he wasn't in the game. And he'll step out, close out on the three really good. You know what I'm saying? And uh hold his own when the man try to when he run the man out the three inch and the man tried to drive it to the rim. So, you know, I watched Thor play some pretty solid defense this week. So I like Thor too, man. I really like him. I think he's in that star lineup for sure. Uh, I, I, I really want to see. I know he ain't the 6'6", 230. If he even 6'6", he might be 6'5". But uh, I know he's about 6'5", 6'6", 230. But uh, I really want to see him try to play the five, man, because that'll give us some flexibility to play to play keep me on at the four. Unless Kevion has made up in his mind and he can really rock off the bench, he can do his thing off the bench, come in and really still get his buckets. You know, that would be great. But if he, if Kevion feels some type of way about being a starter and being at that four spot, you put Kevion at the four. And, uh, man, we got to put go put Jones at Antoine Jones at three. I'm sorry. I think Bruton would be nice off the bench. I think Bruton. I think Jones give us even more size, and then Jones is also a freshman with more potential as a ball handler, as a scorer. He's used to being a, the main scorer, so he, he don't have to, not even been the main scorer, he's used to being the primary ball handler, the man with the ball in his hands. He's used to being that guy, and he's done it on a high level, being, you know, one time being a, the number one shooting guard in the nation, you know, so... Uh, that that's somebody I think we need to play at small four because he got the body to play small four even in college. He got body of good shoot in the league or, or even a small four. You know, he got a nice body on him, so he could be at small four to give us the length and the girth that we need up front. So to kind of help out with Ray North Thornton and, and help out with Keegan on that court. Get at that two, you know, of course they're gonna keep John Martin and that's cool. Okay. And then you got Tyler at the one. I think Alo and Rudy will be excellent coming out of the bench because they give us a totally different spark with that defensive energy they give us, that pressure, you know, making plays and grit. I think they'll be excellent to get out the bench, you know, uh, for the rest of the year, at least for the time being. I want to see the Penny and Vince experience in Atlanta. But I give Penny props too. Now, I kind of skipped around my points in my notes. Uh, but I want to make sure I give Penny props too, man, for for making adjustments. Penny saw that uh, he was kind of forcing it with Alo always being on li- in, a, in a lineup, playing a major role in every game. No matter how well or, or how much he was struggling, Alo was going to play an important role in every game. And that that was like it was just forcing. I mean, it was it was just it wasn't fair to Alo. It wasn't fair to, to to anything else in dealing with the situation. And I like Alo. I think Alo could potentially be our future point guard. You know, I think he's uh, one of them. Uh, I really think he's a third. He's a, he's a third guard. I think he's an excellent. Um, I, I like him though. I like Alo. I love Alo. Alo is gritty. He remind you of what Memphis is. He undersized. He ain't necessarily got all the tools. But with what he got, he make the most of it. The man is averaging like five rebounds a game. Five rebounds a game as a freshman. Five and a half rebounds a game as a freshman. That's very impressive for somebody 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, that is hella impressive. So that alone just show you, that stat alone show you, hey, man, this kid got a lot of heart. He ain't got no business being 5'10", as a freshman, averaging five and a half rebounds a game. 
And you know what I'm saying? This is a guy that don't really get to the rim a lot because he really ain't quite got the moves yet to get. You know, so I, but I think he got the talent to get there. He work on his moves, man. He's gonna have to really work on his ball handling, being able to create more. That's the thing with Elo. Elo does really. He's a solid ball handler. So I'm not knocking him and saying he can't dribble, but he's not a creative dribbler yet to where he can get his own shot with his dribble at any moment in time. He doesn't have that ability yet with the handle. He, or does he have the moves yet? He doesn't have those moves yet that a lot of guys that are, uh, they usually keep when they undersized. Like, and he definitely doesn't have a, a three ball like that. But I I could see Halo developing a solid level of all that over the course of the four years. He definitely got room to grow, and he's that type of kid where he's going to work on it. So uh, I think Aloy will be fine, but for right now, we don't need to force him. I think right now, he still definitely needs to play because he's extremely important to the team. I mean, he's one of the hard and soul pieces of the team, no doubt. But I think Jones needs to be the starter right now with the length that he provides, the defense, and the bruise of mentality. He still provides that physicalness. Uh, might not quite be, he definitely is not quite the leader that Alo is yet, but Jones still provides the physical tools, the aggressiveness that Alo would use to provide, and he would also still provide, uh, and he would also provide more scoring potential and uh, just a little more of a threat uh, versus, you know, the, the form. So, you know, that's how I feel about that. And then I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at uh I'm trying to figure out how to really address that. I put it in my notes. Uh you know, it was good to really see Penny finally trust Antoine Jones more because from what I've seen. And I, I usually have a pretty good read on stuff like this when I speak on I or I don't like to speak on because I don't like to be looking like a moron. You know what I'm saying? So if I don't really get a good feel about something, I feel really confident about my opinion, I, I try not to share it. So if I share my opinion, it's because I'm pretty confident about it. And my opinion on it is my take, what I really feel really deep about, I feel like Penny didn't really trust Antoine Jones. I think it was a little bit of politics potential and I ain't gonna, you know, I'm not gonna throw nobody in or throw that out there but I really think it could have something to do with him you know he loved his boy you know his boy is Alo that's somebody he already went to war with so I gotta understand that his loyalty could be they raised this kid somebody he looked at like his son he's Alo real though so you know he's already been to war with Alo been in the trenches with Alo he know what he got with Alo so I don't knock him going with Alo first and giving Alo that first shot but I, I, I also applaud Penny, and I give Penny the utmost respect, man, because what Penny did, be, Penny saw that I can't keep forcing Alo into the situation. That's not fair to Alo or the rest of them to, for me to force him a big role in every time out, regardless of if he's making a big impact or not. So uh, Penny recognized that, and Penny made the adjustments. And I, I, I'm i glad to see that he finally started trusting Antoine Jones more. Because he played Antoine Jones, usually what he do? As soon as Antoine Jones make the first mistake, not even the first mistake. <clears throat> as soon as Penny see Antoine Jones not make the best move possible on a play, the best decision, he snatched that man out just like it was over with. Might come, come sit down. You might ain't see him. You might see him for a flash and then the rest of the game, but you might not really see him for the rest of the game. That's what's been going on with the man for the whole season thus far. So it was good to see that Penny finally said, "No, nah, I'm not gonna do that." You know, when I when I saw Antoine Jones take a three point shot and he missed, I said, "As soon as that the, the ball play stop, as soon as the play stop, I said they're gonna sell him out." I heard the buzz. There you go, Penny taking him out of here. But, you know, I was surprised. To my surprise, he didn't do that. He actually let Jones stay in there and correct his mistakes and learn from his mistakes and get that experience and grow from it. What happens after that? How do you make up for it? What do you do after that? Do you fall into it or do you just go back on to the next play? Next play. You know what I'm saying? And he was able to, he gave Jones that, man. So I might have talked to Penny on it. 
And that's real talk, man. Penny really did his thing on there. So I, you know, I, I talk, I'm hard on him. I, you know, said something to somebody this today, man. Somebody, a lot of those yesterday, a couple of days ago, I joked with somebody, man, who, you know, close to, you know, you know, one of my people that's pretty close to me over the years. And, you know, he got mad because I told him, I said, man, when your boy get, when your boy, I said, when, when such and such ain't playing good, you talk about him like a dog. You know, you pimp C on him. But when your boy ain't playing good, you ain't got nothing to say. You quiet, you short for words. I told him, man, you know, if you're going to be a cartoon character on your first album, you got to be a cartoon character on your last. And that's just what it is, Jack. And that's, you know, uh, he got hot when I said that. I don't know. You know, you know could have just been tense that day or whatever. But I'm just jumping about it now, man, because that's, that's what it is. I got to give the props to Penny myself. I'm saying I'm holding myself to the same standard I was joking with him about in, in the sense that, man, I got to give Penny props. I've been hard on Penny, so I got to give Penny props. Penny made a lot of good adjustments that guy. Penny pretty much did everything Penny could have possibly done. It was just our main gunner, our main, you know, our guy, he, you know, the young boy, you know, you know what I'm saying? He dropped the clip, you know, he dropped the clip, you know, that day. It's all good, you know what I'm saying? You're a young boy, you're a freshman, little old bitty song. And he got that heart where he's going to come back and gun it. He's going to make sure the next time he plays somebody ranked like that. We play Houston. Houston. In the next week or two, think something like that, next couple of weeks, I think of like 10 days from now, something. Now, nah, January the 3rd, I think it is, we play Houston. And you best believe, man, I believe, I, I'm pretty sure Tyler going to, if all else fail, man, Tyler going to come out gunning that guy. Because Houston ranked number 21 as of today. So, to play a top 20, top essentially a top 20 team, top 25 team for sure, uh, and get that revenge back for how you kind of, you know, you drop the clip on that, on that top three game, you know what I'm saying? So you get a little bit, get a little bit of that respect back, man, you know. You still got respect, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Get a little bit of get his drip back, man, you know what I mean? Get his drip back, and then for lack of a better term, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's gonna be good to see too, man. That's gonna be good to see too. So yeah, man, we 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 rolling, man. I think this this team here got a lot of talent, man. As far as for coming in next year, man, with DJ Jeffries and 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 James Wiseman alone, bro, that's major. That's major. Then it's looking like we can get a. And then Malcolm Dad, Malcolm Dad is a really good player. A lot of folks ain't really they sleeping on him. He's a three star, but he's a high three star. A good good three three star with the potential though he got the talent of a four or five star you know what i'm saying the boy got real talent so uh we just got to get him polished up as far as his skill that's the main thing with that dangerous get him get him a little more familiar with creating and getting his own shots because that's something that's required now that's you pretty much gotta have a handle or you gotta have a way to create your own baskets some way, somehow, like to the degree Melo did or something, because the point guards of today are not really, they're not, like the NBA today, most of the point guards are scoring point guards that you see are stars and that the ones that are being marketed. So the point guard of today is more so a point, the, the combo guard or the two guard of yesterday. That's what they looking at. They looking for you to score buckets now. They not looking for a, a, a traditional, facilitating floor general pass first second third point guard you, you, it's hard to find that today uh, uh or at least find an elite talent doing it you know what i'm saying that's kind of hard to do today so uh you gotta be able to create create your own shots man you gotta be able to create your own baskets because the point guards that today ain't gonna do it for you uh definitely not the way they used to do it you did so that's gonna be really important for for uh, Dandridge coming in to be able to develop that skill and then to be able to develop that three ball to stretch that court make them boys respect your mind wherever you standing on the court don't just respect my mind when up on, when I'm up on the rim respect my mind the moment I step inside the square on the court player respect my mind wherever I'm at on the court man you need to put somebody on me don't disrespect me yeah 
So once once we get him up to speed on that, that used to be a dangerous player. He kind of almost made me a a Julius Randle or somebody like that. You know that type of talent, that type of build. So or you know Noah Vonleh and shit for my Knicks. So yeah. So yeah, man. And, um, Martin, last but not least, man. Martin, Martin showed me some things in that game. Martin, I like Martin. Man. I ain't got nothing but good to say about Martin after that game. Martin showed a lot of heart. Martin came to play when 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 everybody else was when when a lot of the guys on the team weren't able to come to play. Martin showed up, man. He had a lot of heart. He kept fighting, man. When it looked like we blew out a few times, Martin fought, scrapped, kicked, scratched. And fought and got us right back in the game, man. So I, I got a lot of respect for Martin for that game. Uh, you know, one of the things about him, he, you know, he's, he's a really good passer. He really, when he focuses on being a passer, he's a really good passer for the type of player he is and for a player that's not really a great dribble. Um, he's a decent, boy, he's a decent dribble. And I even kind of use that word hesitant because uh, he really don't go right. He just, he just really go left. So, you know, uh, but he's a really, really good passer, man. Really crazy, smart kid, really crafty. He know how to really create and make things happen for his lack of size as a two guard. And, you know what I'm saying? He know how to make stuff happen. So I, I, I really respect Martin after that game. And Martin showed a lot of heart, man. Uh, he, he did a great job of timing his passes, you know what I'm saying? I mean, his he's, he's got like dart like accuracy at times with his passes. I've seen him skip the ball directly to the bees and you know, on cuts to the basket, man, a, a couple of times through the game. I was like, wow, man, Martin, if Martin developed his, his ball handling and passing, he ain't got to develop the pass. The passing is there when he focuses on it, when he wants to look for a pass, uh, which is not most of the time. Martin looking for you. Martin trying to get in the scene. Too Marcy, look, man. I'm trying to get mad. I don't, I don't know how this gonna go, so I gotta make sure I at least make my resume tight for when the summer league come around. You know, I can give me a call to a summer league team or something, you know, before I go to Europe. You know, what I mean, give me a big check or something. So I like Martin, man. Uh, Martin, Martin's a pretty solid player, and he really showed a lot of heart this weekend, man. So kudos to Martin on that one. Else, man, you really came to play, homie, when everybody else wasn't able to really bring their A game. So that was what was up. Man, this show, man, it's been brought to you by, of course, LCA Market Co. Uh, shout out to them, man. They provide the uh they provide the equipment, they provide a lot of stuff, man. I got a, I got their show on matter of fact. LCA Market Co. The account got suspended on Twitter, but you can follow me at Business Square. So I should have been saying it throughout the, the video. I'm tripping. That is at B I D N E S S S Q U A R E at Business Square. Yeah, I'm gonna say that again at Business Square on Twitter. On on Instagram, you can find me at Man on D Square, and you can see that on the back of my shirt. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You can see that on the back of my shirt. You know what I mean? So, you know. Uh, yeah, man. We, we rolling, man. We rolling, man. It's another another episode. We're going to get ready to shoot the, uh, the Memphis Grizzly recap of the last few games. I'm going to also do the Titan games on too. So, y'all stay in tune, man. Right? And also, man, uh, my other sponsor, of course, is at beauty is underscore pain on, on Instagram. Make sure you shout them out, man. They definitely they good people, man. She really been doing her thing. So much respect to her. She she really been down and helping me in any way I can, sponsoring different little stuff. So uh, shout out to LCA Marketing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out, catch me, follow me at Bidney Square on Twitter. Or at man on D Square on Instagram. But really, when we talk with sports, we really be doing that on Twitter. So holler at me. You got any questions? You got anything you want to say? You want to smoke? Holler at me. Yeah. Till then.